the reason that we have such a draw and such a value to that community is because I talk slow and I talk clearly, but that's not me. I don't do that on purpose. That's just who I am as a person. Right? So I've always been very intentional with the show about using my adult speaking voice to talk to kids as a peer and just being very intentional with what we say and direct. And I think that does wonders for the special needs community. So getting those notes from from parents in those in those situations just absolutely, you know, puts a big old goofy smile on my face. As a young child, Edwina Adams was quiet by nature. She would whisper when speaking. In boot camp, she was thrashed for not yelling loud enough. But when she discovered her ex-husband was a con man, she started to make noise, proving you don't have to be loud to make some noise. Now Edwina's on a mission to motivate So kick back and tune in for candid conversations with those who have harnessed the power of their voices. Let's make some noise. Welcome to Let's Make Some Noise, where no matter what you sound like, you can make some noise. And this is where we talk about taking adversity and turning it into positive noise, which is my acronym for a narrative of inspiration, strength, and encouragement. And today I'm going to be talking with John Havard. He actually brings inspiration and encouragement to children, and I love it so much. Uh, So we're going to talk about that in a little bit. But I want to get to know John first and let you get to know him. Uh, John, thank you for being here. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. It's great to see you again. (laughs) Yeah, you too. So we go back a little bit. Um, We didn't know each other uh, and randomly came across each other, what, three years ago, maybe online? Probably about three, three years ago on the button. (laughs) Yeah. So um, I I have a a business that is, we live in two totally different towns in Texas, but I have have a business. It's like a home services, um, trash can cleaning business. And John had had his uh, show that he did and we collaborated and that was a lot of fun, a lot of fun. So, um, but John, what, uh, tell us a little bit about you. Sure. So, I mean, uh, I'm a born and raised Texan, uh, uh, pretty, pretty basic, boring guy, honestly. Um, I'm, I'm married to two kids, the four dogs. Maybe not everybody has four dogs, but I do have a lot of dogs, <laughs> but, uh, but, you know, I, I do have a regular nine, you know, eight to five job like most folks, but, uh, on outside of that, you know, we have this unique thing where we create a children's educational show and, uh, that's, uh, yeah, it's, it's funny to me that, that, uh, I am a pretty, you know, normal, boring guy outside of this show. <laughs> Well, I, I highly doubt that <laughs> the little I've got to know you, but, um, but your character is definitely exciting and kids absolutely love him. And you do such a powerful job. You've actually been likened to like the cowboy, Mr. Rogers and what a huge compliment because Mr. Rogers is just amazing. And, and, and I, and you are, you are that level of entertainment. Well, that, that was like the key moment when we kind of realized we were onto something big is very early on, shortly after we had worked with you. I mean, you were one of the first people that that gave us a chance to film something really cool. You know, we were, we were just getting started and nobody knew who we were or anything. And, and then you reached out and said, Hey, would would you guys like to film this? And Oh my goodness. Yeah, absolutely. (laughs) But, um, the shortly after we filmed that the Houston Chronicle did a, a little blurb on us and, and called it the Texas Mr. Rogers. And I was just like, okay, mm. we're doing good things here. We're not stopping. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And good. I'm glad you didn't because you easily could have, right. I mean, starting something, anything like this or what, like what you've done a business and, and this is a business in itself as well. Right. Um, that's a yeah. lot of work. And then to take equipment and just, to getting character and find the locations and all the coordinating. Um, so first of all, let's talk about why. So your show is called Cowboy Jack. And Cowboy that's Jack. your character. Mm-hmm. And what made you pick that character? And how did that come about? Sure. So, I mean, what really started it was, uh, you know, during the pandemic, you know, my day job, I used to travel, you know, 60, 70% of the time. 
And I distinctly remember I was in Cincinnati on a work trip and my boss called me and said, Hey, they just closed the Houston rodeo. You need to get home. Something weird is going on. (laughs) And so at that time I had a two and a half year old son and we were always those parents were like, you know, we're not going to do the TV thing. We're not going to let them watch TV. And we held pretty, pretty tight to that until we couldn't. And when COVID happened, uh, we were both working from home and we had this two and a half year old son who we you know, love and adore. But at the same time, we had to continue doing our jobs via, you know, uh, Mic- well, Microsoft Teams wasn't a thing then, but it was, uh, uh, I can't even remember, Skype was a big uh, platform and Zoom meetings. We were just living on Zoom meetings. And so we needed something to, to put our son in front of so that we could get some work done. And so we started using the television as a temporary, you know, babysitter or a mind break or any of those things. And we just weren't loving what we were seeing out there uh, available for him. And the things that he gravitated to seemed to be the things that really drove us crazy and things that we weren't necessarily wanting him to watch. And I just continued to talk about it and wouldn't stop talking about it. And and, uh, you've had the pleasure of meeting my wife, but uh, yeah, she listened amazing. to me. Yes, yeah, she, she is. She, uh, she listened to me complain about this enough to where one day she finally said, well, if you hate it so much, why don't you make something yourself? And I <laughs> said, well, fine, I will. And, and we had bought a, uh, GoPro camera that year to record our son opening Christmas presents. And so we had the camera, we just didn't know anything else. Well, at that time he was absolutely obsessed with uh, toy story, the movie, the whole franchise of toy story movies. And his favorite character in the world was Woody. And so I just thought, you know what? I have everything to be a cowboy. The only thing I didn't have was a leather vest. And so I, and I didn't know it was going to be a leather vest. I literally went to a a Western wear store, Cavenders, and uh, figured out, okay, I need a vest. And I found a leather vest. I bought that. And I was like, all right, I'm Cowboy John. And and my wife was like, Cowboy John doesn't sound very cool. What about Cowboy Jack? Hey, that has a ring to it. All right, let's do that. <laughs> wow. Your wife's just a visionary. Look at that. So she is. She, <laughs> awesome. I'm glad she uh, spurred that thought for you because it, it, it truly is incredible. And Cowboy Jack is perfect. Perfect name. And the character will definitely have to, you know, for those watching the show, they'll see an image of what that is because it, it's, it's really good. Um, just, just picture me with a big old hat on, you know, <laughs> <laughs> and a brown leather vest and some boots. That's, yeah. Yep. Um, you know, after you did that Houston Chronicle thing, I know that you also, I can't remember the name of it. There's a big, huge, well-known Texas, uh, show or something that also. Oh featured yeah, you. yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, that, that was really neat. So, uh, you know, here in Texas we have, this this uh, couple Bob and Kelly Phillips have been doing this show for years called Texas Country Reporter, and uh, they sold out to Texas Monthly, which is a huge Texas publication, uh, about a year or two back. But uh, they reached out to us and said, "Hey, we we love what you're doing. We'd love to film something on you." And for me, that just blew me away because I grew up watching that show with my dad. Like I remember. Uh, just being like a young kid and, and getting to watch, you know, Friday night TV with my parents. And we'd always watch Texas country reporter and it's, I mean, Bob Phillips and, and Kelly Phillips for that matter, have a way of interviewing people that just, it's a God given talent that not a lot of people have and getting things out of people in a magical way. And I'd watched them do this a hundred times. And then I, I, we set up a recording. They were, they met us at the Woodlands children's museum here in the Woodlands, Texas and um, the, I walked in and there's Bob Phillips, a guy I've been watching on TV for you know 20 years of my life. It's a, a long running show. I think they're in their 20 plus year uh, anniversary of that show. And I walk in and there's Bob and Kelly Phillips and they just walk over and they're like, hi, John, nice to meet you. And I, I, I thought I would be like starstruck or something, but it was just, he was just so down. They were both just so incredibly down to earth that it, it didn't feel like meeting, you know, it felt like I had known them forever. It was just really cool. That's really cool. Yeah. And I'm glad to hear that they're just as genuine in person as they, you know, are on the show. That's nice. That's the way I say it is like they genuinely, and I hope people get the same feeling about meeting me in person is that I'm genuinely the same person I am on camera as I am in real life. And my favorite part about that experience is that they demanded that my wife be on camera with me. (laughs) 
<laughs> and my wife Andrea, although she is the pretty one of the bunch, right? She's she's a beautiful gal. She hates being in front of the camera. Cannot stand it. She does not like to be the center of attention at all. And with their interview style, they got her answering a ton of questions and talking and. Uh, I love going back and watching that now and seeing how well my wife did with all that just because she was at so, so at ease and she hates watching it, but I love watching uh, it. <laughs> yeah. I, I, yeah, she is amazing. Um, so not only was she kind of the creative genius to a point behind this, um, <laughs> but she has been your cameraman and still and is. she does a great job. Does she? She's... She really does a good job. I mean, here, I mean, we're kicking off a brand new year of Cowboy Jack, and she is literally the brains of the operation at this stage. I am just the guy in the big hat. Like, she <laughs> she schedules the appointments. She, you know, uh, uh, gets everything set up. She's the camera crew. She's the editor, publisher, everything. So Wow. She's good. And, but you are good too. Like you are, you, no, you, you are genuine <laughs> and just like who you are as a person, but the way you connect with kids, um, because I follow you on, you on social media and I see what parents will say, you know, some of the heartfelt messages. So what are some of your favorite that you've heard? I mean, the, the, the thing that I really love, and it's, this is completely by accident, a, a part of our show that's completely by accident because I had no one, I mean, I, I didn't know anything about this when we got into it, but the messages we get from uh, special needs parents, uh, you know, parents of, of kids on the spectrum and with sensory disability issues and, or sensory uh, issues uh, reaching out to us and saying, you help put our child at ease. You helped make getting a haircut way easier. My child wow. is 14 years old and they just got their first dental exam without, um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, being put on under, you know, put under, or, you know, just got their hair cut without being restrained for the first time. And it's what I've been taught, you know, accidentally through this is the reason that we have such a draw and such a value to that community is because I talk slow and I talk clearly, but that's not, I don't do that on purpose. That's just who I am as a person. Mm -hmm. right? <laughs> so I've always been very intentional with the show about using my adult speaking voice to talk to kids as a peer and just being very intentional with what we say and direct. And I think that does wonders for the special needs community. So getting those notes from, from parents in those, in those situations just absolutely, you know, puts a big old goofy smile on my face. <laughs> yeah, that is so cool because what you do is Cowboy Jack always like has these adventures, right? And he goes and he'll go get a haircut and you and just like Mr. Rogers used to do in such a gentle and powerful way take a simple yeah. thing that wasn't simple for that parent you know of the kid who couldn't go get a haircut and yeah like who would have known that that's amazing uh, yeah i mean w when i made the haircutting episode or when i made the dental the first dental visit episode we've done two of those now um i had no idea the impact that would have and it's just it's crazy because that happened accidentally if I wanted to recreate it now, knowing what I do know, I don't think I could do as good a job as we did the first time, but it, it's just those little magical things that happen. And it, you know, if you get one message saying you made my life easier as a parent, that's worth it. But we've gotten thousands, you know, it's, it's crazy. Wow. So what's it like a dream location that Cowboy Jack could go to? Uh, dream location, big on the bucket list that I'm really, really trying for this year would be to to film at Minute Maid Park with a couple of the players on the Houston Astros. That's a dream of mine. We've we've connected to the to the uh, AAA team, the the Skeeters, and uh, or I'm sorry, they're not the Skeeters anymore. They're the Space Cowboys, and uh, we, I think we will definitely be filming with them. But uh, we were fortunate enough to film with the Houston Texans there at NRG Stadium in Houston, but. Mm -hmm. Being a lifelong Houstonian and being a huge baseball nut myself, if I could film with the Astros, man, I, oof, yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm sure it'll happen. And uh, uh, if anybody well, listening to the crossed. show can make that happen, let yep. us let them know. So, <laughs> so you know, like I said, we we like to talk about adversity and kind of pushing through that. And you know, it sucks when you're going through some hard stuff. But what are some really challenging things that y'all have dealt with that you've 
kind of carried on and, and maybe you're seeing the end of the a light at the end of the tunnel or even if it doesn't happen you there's something positive that is coming out of that yeah i mean we've we've definitely had challenges with cowboy jack because you know it's still not where we ever wanted it to be um production wise and everything like that but one of the things that that kind of took us really by surprise is we put this out there for our son and we knew our friends' kids liked it. We all thought that they liked it because it was Mr. John. You know, they're watching me. But come to find out, it's it's actually something more than that. And uh, it grew way faster than we ever could have imagined. I mean, we I remember when we hit our first million views, and that was just such a huge, you know, such a huge benchmark of success for us. We couldn't believe it. And now we're doing, you know, 10x that every month, and it's just like, what how but um we grew really really fast and then you know of course like some of these platforms that that you can be on like you know our biggest platform is you know youtube and uh we were on there and and then uh we got demonetized very quickly but and and for a lot of creators that would be something that's the death of their project right like if if you say well i can't financially gain from this or I can't recoup the money that I put into it, then I'm done. But the thing that, and, the, and we worked our way through that, that, you know, gratefully, but the, the thing that, that kept us going about is, and the thing that why we continue to do Cowboy Jack and why we'll never quit is because it was never about the money for us. You know, it, we didn't intentionally start this to be a business or anything. Um, but we were, you know, what I would tell anybody is if, if you have something like that happen to you, and that's a must have for the content you're creating, just keep chugging it because there's so many different ways that can work out. That's huge. And, and you said something really important. You said basically the reason it didn't knock you off course is because it wasn't about the money. You had a bigger mission. And that's important in life, whether it's a business thing like this, that deals with money or a health scare, right? Like what, what's your ultimate, what's your purpose in life? And, and you really can, if you can latch onto that, it's powerful. Yeah. I, 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 it's always good to have goals. I mean, I, I, as I get a little older, I try to be more intentional with my goals and, and reaching those. But uh, I think as long as you can, you know, if it's something that you absolutely love and it's something that you pa- you're passionate about, I think ever, you know, giving up on that is, you know, sometimes you just have to, but if there's a means to keep it going, I, I'd say just keep pushing along. I mean, we get, we've been very fortunate. We, you know, we were our only platform for the longest time was, was YouTube. And of course we wanted to grow our reach and we thought that was the, the means to do it. And it, it, it's a great tool. It's the world's largest search engine. You can't ignore YouTube, right? That's, yeah. you need to be there, but uh, through this experience, we've been really because of our exposure on there, we've been picked up on other net, other platforms. So, like our our second most successful platform is a platform called Yippie TV, which is owned by Trinity Broadcast Network, and it's actually mm-hmm. a Christian streaming uh, network for kids. Oh, really? And um, yeah, it's great. And we don't actually talk about you know religion or faith or anything anything political or. Oh controversial of any sort on our show. I'm very intentional about that. Mm-hmm. We do not talk about anything that could offend anybody. I try, you know, we try our best to make sure we're always cognizant of that because we want Cowboy Jack to be for everybody. But the thing that we do do that, that brought their, them to us that made them interested in us is that we always show being a good steward of the, the world we live in and a good member of the community. So we're out exploring and playing and we see a piece of trash. Well, let's pick that up so we don't have a mess for the next people to enjoy, Mm -hmm. you know, things like that. It's just good moral content. Just trying to, uh, it's actually me trying to instill the values I want in my own kids (laughs) in everybody, you know, so. The do unto others as you want as you would do done to yourself. you. Yeah. Right. Mentality, which we all need, you know, that's, um, that's amazing what would you tell somebody if they have an idea and they think they're going to start with that idea and it seems crazy 
and they're thinking, what in the world are my family and friends going to think about this? <laughs> and, I, and I asked this because I literally just made a video this morning about how, like, it's going to be cringy. When you first do it, it's going to be cringy. You're going to feel like, oh, I can't believe I just did this and put it out in the world. But what, what would you tell somebody if they want to start doing something, but they're afraid? I absolutely love this question because I don't think, I mean, I, 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 I try not to be conceited here, but just hear me out. I don't think there's anyone who could come up with a, an idea crazier than what I was doing and run with it and just throw all embarrassment to the wind the way we did. And I'm, <laughs> I could never have been happier with the outcome of doing that. So, I mean, my day job and what I do for a living is industrial sales, industrial engineered products, industrial construction. It is a rough and gruff environment, right? And I'm mm -hmm. pretty well known in the industry that I'm in. And so I knew by putting this online, all of those people were going to see me in a cowboy hat, jumping, skipping, skipping <laughs> you know, doing all those things. And uh, I just said, you know what? Worst case scenario, they're going to get a laugh at me. Mm -hmm. That's fine. Laughs are fine. I, 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 I like laughing at people sometimes too. You know, let's just go for it. And um, what I always tell people when, when they ask me this question is that when you start, it's going to be terrible. Accept that. Like, don't wait for it to be perfect because it'll never be perfect. I look at stuff that we recorded two weeks ago and I'm like, oh my gosh, how did I say that? Why did it look so terrible? Look at, oh, you're never going to be satisfied with the output because you're an entrepreneur. You're someone who wants perfection. You're constantly striving to get better. So you're never going to be truly happy with what you're doing. I don't, I don't care right. if, if, uh, Disney called me tomorrow and said, we're going to buy out your Cowboy Jack franchise and pay you gazillions of dollars. And we'd like to, you know, give you free round trip tickets to everywhere in the world for the rest of your life. I still would not be satisfied with that. I, I still would seek improvement in some way. So don't be afraid of your first content because it's going to be terrible. There's no way around it. But you don't get better unless you start. And yeah. every second that you don't start something, you're losing time. So I say, you know, it's going to be bad. It may crash and burn, but if you never try, you'll never know. You just have to put yourself out there. And if you're not willing to put yourself out there, then you're not willing to chase the dream, period. Exactly. So, you know, having a great idea is a wonderful thing, but if you never act on it, it's, it has no value in your life. Stop wasting the calories on things that, that you aren't going to go for. Put them all in your focus. Find something that you are comfortable jumping into and just go for it. <laughs> Love it. It's so good. Well, if uh, if people want to reach out to you or learn more about the show, where where would they go online? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's real easy these days, thankfully, that we have such great uh, uh, inclusion. But uh, Cowboy Jack is available. You know, if you just go on YouTube, you can search Cowboy Jack. If you happen to be on Yippee TV, search Cowboy Jack. Uh, Amazon Prime even has Cowboy Jack these days. We're also on the streaming service Tubi. So anywhere you're watching your favorite shows, just search Cowboy Jack and, and you'll see me. <laughs> Very cool. I didn't know you were on Tubi and Amazon now. That's amazing. Yeah, those are those are new developments we're excited about. We don't even know how it's going to work out, but we're trying. Yeah. It well, congratulations. took a significant amount of work. Yeah, thank you. It, it, it was so YouTube, you can create any content you want in any format and put it on there. And they're very accepting of any level of content. Those other platforms have specific requirements as far as production quality and everything. Mm -hmm. So it was a huge undertaking to get our content up to that level. But uh, and it may be for absolutely nothing. You know, each audience is completely unique. But that's another thing. We're just it costs some money. It was time invested, but we'll see how it goes. And if it doesn't work out, that's okay. We tried. Yeah. Very good. Very cool. Well, is there anything else you'd love to tell uh, people listening or, you know, we talked about Minute Maid Park and filming there with the Astros. Is there any other location that's like a dream location that you want to throw out there? Cause you never know who's li listening. There, there's one right there uh, on our doorstep that we would love to film that we just haven't managed to connect with yet is that, uh, you know, we live so close to NASA. And I think uh, NASA would be great to show kids. And But we've got some we've got some incredible things coming up for this season. I don't give away my secrets, but we've got some really cool things that we're working on. 
but um yeah i just i i i i really love that previous question about you know advice to give people and it doesn't it's again it doesn't matter if it's content creation or starting a business or you know moving to a different town or anything if there's something you crave in life we only have so much time here and it'll go by incredibly fast i mean i'm i'm looking down the nose at 40 and i still look in the mirror and see 18 so <laughs> You know, I, I've got some business mentors and they really shifted my thinking, you know, because we have kids and you have kids too. And for those that do, it, like even like, because you sometimes think, well, you know, uh, when I retire, I'll do this or do that. Um, but if you think about it, you basically have 18 summers with your kids and that's from when they're born. So if they're already eight, that's 10 summers. So yeah, whatever. Even if it's just in your personal life, you know, what are you waiting for? Like, let's just do things. Every second, every second you wait, you're, you're wasting time. And you said 18 summers. I heard another one today that, that just floored me. You have 13 first days of school. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's crazy. Right. Cause it seems yeah. never ending. But that's, is, uh, that's, uh, I have a, I have a kindergartner. That means I have 12 left. Yep. <laughs> he's going to be real mad at me when he's going into 11th grade and I'm following him with a camera and making him hold up a chalkboard <laughs> so I can take a picture. But hey, Caden, I'm sorry, buddy. You're doing the picture. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, well, once again, it was so great to have you. And y'all look up Cowboy Jack, the Cowboy Jack show. It truly is fun to watch. Even if you don't have kids, watch it. You're going to like it. Um, no lie. You've got some fun um, stuff for adults. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So thanks again. And if anybody, if y'all want to connect with me and you haven't already, go to edwinnaadams.com. All my channels are there and you can see what else I'm doing. And thank you for being here. And also don't forget to leave reviews and comments and all the things. Okay. <laughs> thanks. Let's Make Some Noise is produced by Podcast Architects. 